Well, given the topic matter, this video might be divisive, but here we go. We've seen this transition ever since the 90s, I would say, where you have rappers that transition from music into acting, and most of the time it works out pretty well. Uh, it started with Tupac, DMX, um, 50 Cent is probably the most notable. But even all the way to now, there are still rappers that you wouldn't expect that have actually either been featured in or starred in their own films. Machine Gun Kelly, or he likes in the movies to be billed by Colson Baker, his actual name, so we'll call him Colson. He's done 14 movies now, and this is pretty much his first lead role in a film. And this film, Taurus, has been getting a lot of buzz at film festivals and from critics, and rightfully so. I am not gonna lie, although Machine Gun Kelly is one of my favorite musicians, his acting has come a long way. It started pretty rocky. If you refer back to his uh, limited series with Showtime called Roadies, he's pretty good. And then he was in the sequel to SLC Punk, which I don't think anyone saw. You see as he starts to get into these bigger roles, he's a lot more flexibility and he's able to flourish a little bit more as an actor. This was the perfect step for him to take because his performance in this movie is concerningly good. Like, it was convincing on a troublesome level. And I think that's because this film has so many parallels to his actual life. Um, just the premise, him being a struggling musician, trying to find inspiration, struggling with the relationship with his daughter, with his manager, with his friends. Anything that isn't a direct parallel has some sort of metaphor or analogy behind it that leads back to his actual life. But this, uh, his relationship in this film with his assistant, I believe, um, God, I cannot remember her name right now, but I'll, I'll put it right here. Um, their chemistry is so fucking good in this movie. And for them having the most screen time together, I feel like that was required. And they have like a brother-sister type relationship. It's very playful, but there's also stakes that are there because she is responsible for keeping him in line in his career. And I am gonna throw this little spoiler in here. So if you don't want anything for this film spoiled, go ahead and skip ahead like 30, 40 seconds. Um, this film ends with Coulson's character committing suicide. And it's a shame that the day he decided to do it or the day before is when he was at his happiest in this movie. It's just a shame that we, they are so good at masking that side of their life and making it seem like nothing's wrong. For a film based around a musician, I'm really glad that music actually played a big part in this story. And the score was used super effectively, especially in the opening sequence where nothing's really happening, but you are getting this sense of dread and anger hidden somewhere. It's, it's done really well. The film also looks incredible. And they use some filmmaking techniques here that get pretty creative. Um, whenever there is a drug binge or a moment of high from the drugs, the way they edit and pace those scenes is very high energy, very frantic, but then it's also very drowsy and gloomy and kind of hypnotic. And the, um, the camera work and the framing stuck out to me early on too. There's a lot of scenes where the camera is just held on one frame, on one person, and there are outside voices contributing to the scene, but it's just focused on one central shot. And you just get to see the character in frame speak, and then you get to see him react to anyone else that's speaking with him in that scene. And there's one specific scene where Megan Fox is cast in this movie, of course she is. But her and Coulson are in an actual music studio, like in the part where you record. And the camera is filming them. And they're having an entire conversation that starts very high and then it ends on a very aggressive note. And you see the decline in that conversation, but you don't hear anything. You just go off their body language and their mannerisms. You hear 
the conversation in the studio part with his assistant and his friend. They're talking about something completely unrelated. They're oblivious to what's going on in, in the other room. But the way that that was set up and filmed was... I was impressed that they carried that scene as long as they did because it was able to build towards something more effective. I've checked out a couple films by Tim Sutton and typically all of his films look great, but it's the story sometimes that's a little shoddy. Like I mentioned earlier, this, this story here is very bare bones. It's very relatable for Coulson and you don't need anything else really when you have someone who is as in tune with a character as he was you kind of just let him take the rein and take this film where it needs to go a performance this accurate and this grounded just covers more surface area colson baker is a talented actor and machine gun kelly is a talented musician and i am fortunate enough to be fans of both of them so i am enjoying both mediums of entertainment some people out there don't like machine gun kelly i don't know if it's because he wears pink or he dyed his hair or i don't know whatever aesthetically confusing reason you have as to why you don't like the man you can waste somebody else's time with that shit because i'll ride with him fully i even put the little lights up there pink and i have pink on my hoodie just in case anybody really has an issue with that so yeah, if you want to check this out, it's on Paramount+. Plus. I have the extension through Prime, so you can check it out through that way too. But otherwise, just find your own means of seeing it. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace!